This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. I am at Altieri Instrument Bags. I am here with the owner and founder, Donna. Let me ask you, Donna, for over 26 years, you've been providing quality bags for people out there. Quite honestly, though, this came from a need from one musician who needed something. Tell me how it started. Oh, it's it's a great story. Um, I was friends with a lot of professional musicians, and... Uh, one in particular played the tuba for the Aries Brass Quintet, which still is alive and plays at St. John's Cathedral occasionally. And this tuba player has uh, moved on, but he asked me uh, one night when we were out drinking after I was taking pictures of the Aries Brass Quintet, if I would consider making a bag for his tuba. He knew that I knew how to sew. Back in the old days, uh, young and married, uh, I um, used to make knockoff Armani suits for my husband. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he still remembers the vinyl suit I made for him that was exactly like Brian Ferry's from Roxy Music. Let me ask you back then, what was the alternative? Are we talking about hard cases or what did they have? Pretty much it was all hard cases because so many people throughout the years have said to me, where were you when I was on the Paris Metro? Where were you when I had to get to Juilliard on the subway? There was not much of anything. And the fact that I started with a tuba was like going backwards. Sure. Instead of starting with flute bags, I go for the hardest instrument because that was what Jim wanted. So he could carry his tuba on his back on the bus from Boulder to Denver. I made a primitive one with my little dressmaker sewing machine. And then I went I bought a very inexpensive industrial machine, made another one, Put an ad in uh, TUBA, Tuba United Brotherhood Association magazine. Every instrument in the world has its own magazine. And I got an order from the tuba player in the Dallas Symphony. And I was like hysterical. 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 And as they say, the rest is history. Oh, Wonderful. Yes. Let me ask you, let's talk about the material first of all. You've done some very unique things here. What is the material? What are they made out of? And why is it so important? Well, with my uh, brass bags, I use a nylon pack cloth that's urethane coated. So it is water resistant. And unlike Cordura that a lot of packs are made out of, this is very flexible so that your pockets expand way out. You can carry just about all the music and accessories you need. I was at a trombone convention uh, years ago when I used to go to every musical convention there was to market. And some trombonists went out and bought a six pack to make sure it would fit in the pocket and he was sold. When we're talking about an instrument here, people are putting their prized possessions, oh, high yes. dollar, in these bags oh, here, yes. tell me a little bit about the, the padding and the protection that, that okay. goes involved here. Well, um, we make two different kinds of bags. This one we call a gig bag because it's meant to carry the instrument without its hard shell case. And we have specialized parts made, and they're made right here in Denver. For example, this trombone has this huge box built into it to protect the slide, which is so delicate. Huh. It goes out a micromillimeter and it doesn't slide. Interesting. And so uh, finding a company that would make these for me and keeping it local was one of my goals. Wonderful. The quilting that we have inside is wonderful because Brass instruments have a lot of valve oil and liquid. You know how they're always yeah. dumping their spit yeah. if you go to the symphony. This is ripstop nylon. So it not only keeps the instruments shiny, but it there's nothing that can ca get caught in the little pads of the instrument. 
Then we use um, a combination of open cell and closed cell foam. Wonderful. So, I mean, these bags, one thing about it, I mean, I don't care if you've got a violin you're carrying or a tuba, you name it, the straps that you have on there, they're, they're kind of playing a dual role. I mean, I notice they look like a backpack or you can carry them. Tell me about that. Well, um, we always like to give people options. So you have your handles, your shoulder straps, and then you go around to this side and you have your padded backpack straps so you can put it on your back. So you can do, you have your as many ways to do it as the place you have to get to. Wonderful. And right now we are scrolling on the screen right now a lot of the different types of instruments that they uh, create bags for. And uh, you'll notice our contact information is at the bottom of the screen as well. And you can get on the website there, take a look at the different bags and everything. And let me ask you, what is your most popular instrument that you do? I mean, what do you get a lot of? Well, it's it's prorated when you think about it how many tubas are there in an orchestra versus how many flutes and at the moment because of we have a huge korean market we're sh making flute bags of all kinds for example this one right here is what we call our flutes and laptop bags so it's designed for the musician that always needs to carry a laptop and um, we make every size flute bag. But if you think about how many tubas we make, and you met my assistant, Cheryl, she's, she's a tuba queen. Yes. Um, the fact that we will be making three tuba bags a week, wow. at least, it's, and, and there's one tuba player in a symphony. It's just amazing. We sometimes were just mystified where all these musicians are coming from. You crunch those numbers in your mind, you're like, that, that is something yeah, else. Yeah. Let me ask you, speaking of the workshop here, we're talking about a custom workshop, hands-on. I see some activity going on in the back. Tell me about what happens back there and that magic and, and what kind of team you have to make it happen. Um, well, it, we're really, everyone has left m primarily for the day, but uh, we have our cutters and sewers back in the workroom, and I have a contract uh, sewers that also will work off-site in Denver, and uh, you met Lisa. She's putting all the pieces of hardware and buckles together so that a whole kit. We make like a kit f for our sewers. So it's Wonderful. just, um, and this is the shipping. You're in the shipping and inventory room here. And back there is my office. Wonderful. I mean, what I like about it is the fact we're talking about a customized bag. So quite honestly, if somebody wanted to contact you and they had a custom need or desire, like someone did 26 years ago, you would probably be up for the challenge. I think I am one of the, uh, few people left in the world that will do custom work. It's a dying art form. I'm uh, someone that can do a didgeridoo. I can do an Othoclide. I do a lot of the Civil War instruments for Civil War reenactment bands. Um, and you know when you're doing it for a long time and I answer the phone and they know me by first name that you um, you get known in the in the music world it and I've um, kept it small you know I could have let it grow and grow where I would have needed to outsource that ethically was never the direction I wanted to go in um, I wanted a business that I made a good living without I don't need to be anywhere near the one percent and my employees are paid well and really happy well that is the key and I'm sure some of these people and these folks that have these instruments that are on the subways in the parks walking around slugging these throughout the campus they have to be happy as well folks if you'll notice the bottom of the screen right there again is the website what you're gonna find on the website quite honestly is a lot of testimonials of people who have opened up their bags be it worldwide and basically realize and recognize the quality recognized obviously the love and the compassion that you have for your business and it still keeps going 26 years later so this is Gary Atencio with CNTV. And if you don't know, now you know.